Welcome to another episode of From the District with State Senator Suzanne Weber. Uh, Senator, uh, we, good morning. We are recording this on uh, the Juneteenth holiday. Uh, so happy Juneteenth to you, Suzanne. Uh, a holiday that I think everybody, a new holiday I think everybody can, one of those few things that I think you guys did because this became a state holiday while you were in the house, that everybody can say, right. that's nice. That's a good thing. No matter where you're on the political spectrum, I like to think it's a positive thing to celebrate the end of slavery. <laughs> even if it's celebrate, even if the time frame is two years late, because right. that's how long it took for the information to get to Texas right. uh, for people to know. And, you, you know, that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, with, with really, Facebook, we're like 140 Facebook. years late, right? I mean, yeah. because of this, they've been celebrating this in Texas for Yes, they have. Nearly a century and a half. And we've just kind of gotten on the ball on uh, because this is a great thing to celebrate. And a lot of folks drew this holiday to the attention of state leaders as well as the federal government. The federal government did the same thing uh, the same year. And so it is a state and federal holiday. Um, so a happy Juneteenth to everybody. Uh, get out, celebrate freedom for everyone. Uh, I know so, that there are a lot of activities being planned in the Portland area. Yeah. And uh, it, it, rather than an, an additional day of rest, it might be fun for people to get out and participate and get to learn more about it. Right. Especially those uh, of your constituents who are in the metro area, who, yes. who live in Washington County and Multnomah County. Get out there. If you don't know much about, about the holiday, it's I don't know, there's some folks who, who uh, I've heard even poo-poo the holiday as some sort of woke thing. And it, it isn't. It isn't. Um, it is, it really is a great holiday. Um, if you don't know much about it, look it up. The history is really interesting and really cool. Yes, it is. Um, so happy Juneteenth to everybody. Uh, it's been an eventful week. Certainly has. <laughs> um, never a dull moment. Stuff's happening again. Uh, do you want to give us kind of a lowdown of what happened this last week in the South? Well, we had lots and lots of caucuses to discuss, um, lots and lots of uh, uh, scenarios that could have happened this week. Um, but we had a group of dedicated people who were willing to spend all last weekend and a lot of this last week um, negotiating on um, what it would take to provide quorum. And uh, in the end, um, it was decided to uh, to accept what was negotiated and go forward because we had a lot of work to do. And um, there were a lot of uh, budget bills and other bills that needed to be um, passed. And time was running out because signing die is Sunday, the official uh, day. And with the... Um, bills coming over from the House. It was not only an issue that uh, revolved around the Senate, it involved the, the bills that were also coming out of the House. And so um, it was decided that quorum would be provided once again. And uh, Thursday, um, three uh, additional people went in and provided that quorum so there could be the start of uh, really um, looking at all of the bills that needed to be passed. Right. So delving a little bit into this, I think at the beginning and kind of throughout, there was a, small, a, a group of people from one side of the aisle that you heard from uh, that the fact that you were denying quorum was terrible. I and mean, they would never support you, never support you denying quorum. Uh, the only good thing, for, the only thing that they felt was 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 appropriate was for you to go to the floor and vote doesn't matter what bills come up doesn't matter at all so there was that group of people we've also heard from a group of people who said essentially said anything but total victory of shutting down the session completely passing zero bills anything other than that right is unacceptable right uh the reality though is all they needed was for three it was just three people three people to show up and on thursday yes. they did you were not one of them no i was not um 
I will say, I think looking at what the the objections were, particularly to 2002, House Bill 2002, right. was that it eliminated the uh, the rights of parents to consent to abortion and gender sex changes, gender care uh, under 15, and eliminated their right to be to be to consent to that. Right. That That's was changed. True. That was removed. Yes. That was removed. You still didn't go to the floor to vote for that vote, and the other one was a, a gun bill right. um, that that had that essentially raised the um, raised the age to get to buy a gun from eighteen to twenty one. Um, yes, it, uh, it, it essentially banned ghost guns, so guns that were built right. that have no serial numbers. No serial numbers. And there was a third part that I can't remember. Um, um, no, I've, uh, I've, forgive me. I've spaced it. It's been a I, long. I, I spaced that too because but the only thing that survived people. that were the ghost gun. The go yes, ghost they did. Um, and there were a number other of other things uh, that the that, that uh, was negotiated. Uh, the the constitutional amendment that was going to go forward that essentially made it so abortion and uh, and sex changes right. um, were in the constitution. That was scuttled. Um, forcing measure one for uh, one fourteen, the anti-gun bill that passed that's under litigation, forcing that into place. That was scuttled, so that went away, uh, and a number of other bills that went away. But you you didn't go to the yeah. floor. You didn't go, I to, the didn't floor go to the floor on, on Friday. Tuesday, on, you didn't. You did not on Thursday. No, I did not go so, on Thursday. And yes, so, I was in the building. Um, I. I watched the session from my office. I did not participate. But like I said, uh, I've already had my 10 unexcused absences. So um, it really didn't matter if I was there right. or not. Right. So because you the three people that made the quorum were there. So my, but my understanding is that that was a, um, a decision that even though uh, your, your major objections were right. were addressed uh you still felt those bills were bad and i did and i had said i would never vote on them and i didn't right. because i wasn't going to go and be just a no i felt that uh, i had a larger voice in the conversation that i was totally against the whole um the whole bill um, and you know that my main concern was for the parents and for their rights to be addressed. And the B-17 addressed that for the most part. Um, that was the amendment for those folks who are wondering why, the, why, why an airplane is involved. Um, yeah, a B, it was a, a Dash 17 amendment. Um, and then the B-12 for... Um, yes, the B-12. Uh, yes. Yeah, so again, the, it, when when you hear when we hear us talking about the dash twelve or the dash seventeen or the dash three, that means there were amendments that many amendments, or that was the third amendment that was written from the dash three, or and so that was adopted, and then there was maybe a dash seventeen. So seventeen amendments were proposed, and it was that the dash seventeen that maybe got accepted. So right, um, and you got to remember that two thousand two was forty five pages long. Right. So there was a lot of material in that beyond um, parental authority. Right. So the question that we hear is, why did you go back and give quorum for these bills? And the answer is, you didn't. No, I didn't. Right. I did not go back to give quorum. To however, quorum. however, the next day, at that point, those bills that you objected to are done. They've passed. They walked over the they, dam. They've gone. So then the question of why did you come back the next day is, well, those bad bills are gone. You still have budgets to pass. You have right. some good bills that you need to get done. So right. uh, for those folks you also who have to you, remember, well, yeah. you also have to remember that those bills, now that they have passed the Senate and they have been changed, mm -hmm. substantially changed, they're going to have to go back to the House right. because there's going to have to be concurrence now with the changes on the house side right and so those bills aren't done yet the house has got to address the changes that were made on the tenant side 
Right. So, um, in, anyway, <laughs> I think yeah. it's important to know, though, well, you've heard, you've heard from some people say, why did you go back and allow these bills to pass? The answer to that is you didn't. You did go back on Friday once those yeah. bills, and you, I'm assuming, we haven't talked about this, but I'm assuming that you intend to continue to go back every day now that those bills oh, are yes. passed. Oh, uh, yes. Because you do have important budgets that need to get passed. Right. Um, you have good good bills, good policies that need to pass. Um, and, you know, there were three things that were considered in this denial of quarrel, quorum. <laughs> it was the unconstitutionality of some of these bills. There was the unlawful part with um, the summaries being um, written appropriately. And then there was the issue of bipartisan support. And so, you know, once we have gotten substantially through those objections, then it's all right to go back and deal with it. And, right. um, you know, SJR 33 would have changed the Constitution. That is a major uh, piece of work that has to be done if that is going to be uh, accomplished because changing the Constitution is then going to change the ability for all kinds of lawmaking challenges because the Constitution is not something you just change lightly. Um, and the unlawful part of not um, not following the law to make sure that our summaries were um, consistently written at an eighth grade uh, level so they could be uh, much uh, more understandable. Right. Um, that is going to be addressed also. And I will tell you that <clears throat> coming on the floor, the summaries have been given to us, the new summaries have been given to us of all of the bills that we are um, addressing from this time forward have passed the flesh scale at about um, in the 60 um, numbers. Um, and so they are much more understandable. Um, and so everything going forward will address uh, the readability of the summaries and so that um, issue is, is taken care of. And then there's the bipartisan part of it. And that's something that will be ongoing because the, you know, the minority has got to be heard. And the minorities, um, what the minority ha feels is important to our survival of our state and the health of our state has got to be considered. And so bipartisan chip will uh, be addressed throughout the rest of the session and be um, a main part of the conversation going forward. Right. And I think it's important to remember the majority of the bills that come out of the Oregon legislature are passed nearly unanimously. Um, oh, they are. I mean, the it is we get kind of bogged down in these you know dozen or couple of dozen bills that the majority just wants to shove down people's throats um and that's really unfortunate because there is a lot of agreement amongst amongst members there of these is. from from the most liberal to the most conservative uh, the, there are basic work that is done in the legislature that just makes common sense and i mean like real common sense not common sense that, that is different depending on where, where your political ideas are so um we're not talking about a lot of controversial bills here we're no. talking about a couple of dozen out of three thousand out right. of that and of those three thousand probably you know what 15 percent actually get across the finish line and of those you know, three, it was four or five hundred. We're talking a couple of dozen that are just really, really bad. Yes. Uh, and, and I also will tell you that there are uh, senators that will not be coming back. Right. They right. have they have opted to continue to stay out for the rest of the session. Right. Uh, you are not one of those. Um, I no. think at that point, I think at the point 
that the bills that were the most objectionable to you passed, or at least they left the Senate. Um, yes. At that point, there are still important things that you want to get done. I don't think you ever wanted to just, just blow up the session. Am I wrong? I mean, I think you wanted to come back. I did, yes. But I you did. wanted I, these bills to trash, understandably. I think that the work that we have been doing is important. You know, work concerning caregivers and housing and death taxes and childcare and um, all of those things. Yeah. Additional um, items to be taught in the school. I mean, all of those things need to be addressed. Right. We need to be going forward. Right. Well, I think it's. Uh... So there's there's good news and there's bad news. Uh, good news is that I think some of your biggest objections were addressed. Bad news is those bills still passed. Uh, you did not go back to give a quorum, um, but there were enough who decided that they wanted to. Um, that those bills are not passed, and now you're 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 back and you're wanting to get get on with right. things as much as you can. So that's where we're at. Um, so for those folks who who just are upset that any senator has gone back, I understand. I think maybe it's the, those uh, folks who are upset with the, the senators who went back to give quorum, I, I, I'm i not going to throw anybody under the bus. So it's a decision that every either. senator had to make, right? Um, right. Uh, you made a different decision, but that's... I think that by by denying quorum, because you cannot use the words walk out. We did not walk out. We were in the building. We were working through the whole thing. We just weren't there for the floor sessions. We denied quorum. And I think that um, that was a, a pivotal move to make sure that we would be heard. And that it also pointed to the fact that we weren't being heard. And I think that as much as uh, my constituents know what was going on, they also could see that we weren't we weren't being heard. And yes, I understand we are in the minority. And yes, I understand majority rules. But the majority cannot just trod roughshod over the minority. Right, right. And I think that's uh, I think it's also important to remember really. If you go back to the 2022 election, the difference between Democrats being in the majority and Republicans being in the majority is just oh. a few thousand votes. Yeah, it's like 2,500 votes, something right. between 2,500 and 4,000 votes. That's all. So it's, I, I think we're hearing that, oh, the, the Democrats have a strong, deep uh, um, mandate. It they just don't. isn't true, and I I think it's one of the frustrations in the minority is that when you constantly run over, I mean, just take yeah. the more the most extreme part of your agenda and just shove it through without any concern or thinking, right. you know what? They, there's another half of the state that's really going to hate this, and exactly. just not care. <laughs> You've got what seven counties that are controlling thirty six, or you know, however many counties we have. There's that, a that's reason. Ridiculous. I mean, I think it's unfortunate that people joke and make fun of half the state that's actively trying to join Idaho. I, mean, I, I, hear, I hear nothing but but joke and mocking from the other side of the aisle on that. That should bother us. Yes, it, it should, should bother every Oregonian that half the state's landmass wants to leave because they feel so disconnected yes and so out of touch with their fellow citizens yes and the way this and it's not like o oregon is this giant deep blue state right again you point to if three thousand votes out of what three million i don't, I don't even know how many it was. I don't remember. Um, if just 3,000 more votes had switched, yes, we'd have a Republican. Senator, Senator Canope would be probably President Canope. Yes. 
and things would be very different. So certainly I think the majority getting their way more often than not is understandable and reasonable and they, they have the most votes. But the idea that there's just this, this giant mandate and they can do whatever they want and they don't have to care at all of your opinion and the opinion, which is the opinion of your constituents, because it's not it's not just dis disrespecting you and dis disrespecting Leader Canel, disrespecting your Republican colleagues. It's right. it goes the people you represent. It's the people we represent. Right. It's saying that you guys don't get a voice, or yep. the only yep. voice that you should have is coming up to, to facilitate their agenda. Right. And right. That's not, that's right. That's not. And honestly, probably had you gotten to the, where you're at in 2002 and 2005. Had you just done that in negotiations in good faith? You guys, I don't even know if you guys would have walked out. Maybe you would have. I don't know. I, that's, I don't want to make no. that. I think there's a chance. That there's a chance that it would have never happened. If there would have been some sort of effort to just compromise, to look at the whole bill and to be able to compromise and be right. able to agree that maybe compromise was needed and should we work on this yes right but i mean the, the senate president came up to the media and say this is not up for debate it's not right. up for compromise he said it over and over and over well again. apparently it was so um but you got to <laughs> realize that it came down to um the negotiations were between um, the leaders of the senate and the leaders of the house and uh, regular senators who stepped in, right? Uh, you know, our our deputy um, leader uh, Finley, uh, Senator Finley stepped in. Uh, Kathleen Taylor from the other side, Senator Taylor, stepped in, and they could between the two of them, and uh, Senator Canope, they could see a way through to compromise. Right. Yeah. It's you know I look I just. Maybe I spent too many years doing this when Peter Courtney was president. And I think no matter what you think about Peter Courtney, um, uh, who, was a, who was a longtime Senate president uh, from Salem originally, uh, who just re retired, he always cared about the other side. Yes, uh, he did. This would have never happened if Peter Courtney was Well, there. I don't know. Maybe it would have, but I think... He would have worked really he hard would to have make worked sure harder. it hadn't come to that point. Yeah, I mean, certainly, I mean, there have been denials of quorums, true walkouts when Peter Courtney was there. But I, I think he always tried. Yes, like, he did. I, I, when you come in and go to the media and say, this is not up for debate, get back here and vote, uh, that's not trying. No, no. it's not. He was really disappointed in... President Wagner on this. It was just look to Peter Courtney. Look to Peter Courtney. He is a real model on how to run the Senate. Yes. Um, and yes, sometimes he was a crabby old man. He was not sometimes a crabby old man. He was always a crabby old man. Yes. But part um, of his charm. He, he did have the respect of his um, colleagues also. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we've talked that to death. But the reality is, folks, we've got a week left um, yep. uh, to get budgets done, especially. You know, you guys right. have passed a number of them. But one thing I want to yeah. talk about uh, before we get into kind of what's coming up, um, we have some more big news of bad stuff happening uh, with a massive data breach from In DMV. The DMV. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this. Um, well, I, uh, <laughs> I know we're still learning a lot. So. We're still learning about how this happened. There's an article in the Oregonian again this morning on how you can make sure that, you know, you're not going to be impacted by this and what has happened. Um, data breaches um, on the whole are happening all over our state. Um, they're happening, unfortunately, in a lot of our um, government um agencies because a lot of our software hardware whatever you want to call it um, has not uh, been updated and maintained at a level that uh, 
could uh, filter out these data breaches. And so you will see in the budgets um, that there are a lot of upgrades, uh, computer upgrades and um, software updates in the budgets coming forward because of how many breaches there are and how many uh, malware things and you know um, agencies being held hostage um, uh, currently. Um, it, it's frightening to think that um, uh, we're basically on a thread and that is you know fiber optic thread that can be um, hacked into at any time so I think it's really I think you know I I, I think it was really frustrating because I just wasn't surprised I just wasn't surprised at all because I mean how many times are we gonna do this uh, total collapse of unemployment yes. The unemployment department because yeah. of, of of upgrades that they had paid they had money for and they just yeah. hadn't done them for years they hadn't right. done them. and and we look at business and business started having this happen i mean you saw it at joann's and you saw it in, in uh, other um, stores and restaurants that there were these um uh attacks and business stepped up and took right. care of the safety of your information right government did not and this is so my i guess my word my, when we hear from our friends on the side that we want the government to take over health care or we want the government to take over this or that this stuff does not help your cause because if no. the government can't run a website if they can't run a computer system and you want them to take over the largest industry in the state, in the, in the country, and you want, uh, and you want a twenty-two billion dollar tax increase to do it. Stuff like this does not help your cause, because you can't run a website, you can't run a, a just a computer platform without it being well, hacked. You have you can't just operate on the status quo, right? Uh, because all of that technology changes so quickly. And, right. you know, so that you'll, you'll be seeing if you read through the budgets that there's a lot of uh, uh, changes that will be made, especially. Well, that is to, heartening. To be, heartening able, to, to, be uh, able to protect our identities. That is heartening to hear. I think we also need to make sure that we hold the agency's feet to the fire to make sure they actually do the work. Because I, I, again, I bring up the unemployment department, which you oh. lambasted as you were running for the house. Uh, they had the money to fix it. They did. And, and, they and just the thing was, there were employees that thought that I was attacking them. It, I was yeah. not attacking them. It was the system that was out of whack. Right. I mean, I, you know, I, I think about our Tillamook DMV and just, I mean, <laughs> the guy who runs that was named Citizen of the Year. Brian. I know. Brian's a great guy. So the people who one of the grand marshals of the parade. Yeah, the people who work in the DMV in the offices who 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 are going in every day and doing the work. That's not you guys aren't the problem. By no. all, I mean, you you're doing what you need to do to keep the the machine running. It's 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 the leaders. It's the leaders of the agencies who, when they are given money to say, okay, now go upgrade your your systems and right. they sit on it for six years which right. is what happened at the unemployment department uh that's a problem yeah. and so you so i hope uh, if there's any agency leaders who are who are watching this if you're getting money to upgrade your systems please use it please, please do it right. yes and um, you know we, we do have a new program in our universities that is uh going to be addressing cybersecurity. So Good. we are going to be uh, on the forefront of um, educating um, our young people about what needs to be done for cybersecurity. I mean, look at how many how many counties have been held hostage. Right, and that's great. I'm glad that's happening. But I hope we also practice what we preach. Yes. The irony would be is uh, would be us in the cutting edge of teaching cybersecurity in our universities, but running 1990s uh, yes. software in our agency 
uh, and our agency computers. That would be irony of ironies. Um, so I hope, I hope we we put our money where our mouth is on that. I will just draw folks' attention. Uh, if you've got an Oregon driver's license, uh, you're really being um, it's really being recommended that you get a credit report, review it, see if there's anything weird happening. If you don't have any credit monitoring, you can get it for free. Exactly. Like uh, www.annualcreditreport.com or you can call 1-877-322-8228. So uh, yep. www.annualcreditreport.com uh, or 1-877-322-8228. And, and um, I'm sorry to interrupt oh, really finishing, but um, that information will also be in our newsletter this week. Right. And it is also um, uh, available in, in the Oregonian and online. Right. Um, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if Katie, when editing this, has actually superimposed the uh, the number and website onto the screen, as I, I say. So I would not be surprised. That um, so uh, that's so that's unfortunate. It's um, uh, we're we're monitoring that, uh, but do go ahead and get that credit report. And make sure that you uh, that I mean, that's ninety percent of records. Ninety percent of our audience are affected. Right. Um, and there, okay. and, and I have to tell you that as constituents, you have to be on the alert because there will be a, a series of audits that will also be coming forward. That you need to pay attention to how agencies are being audited and what they are finding out from their audits. Um, there, there's a, an audit that came out um, for how certain government monies were being spent from monies that came from uh, the COVID money um, that were not necessarily being used appropriately. And so I, I think that we need to continue to watch um, what our government agencies are doing and not to be afraid to question if you see things that you think um, are dubious decisions on their part, because usually what these audits are bringing forward are things that are impacting your lives ultimately and right. how your state spends its money. And, and we'll try to, we, we'll try attention. to put that, we'll try to put that, uh, feature that in some newsletters when these audits come out. Um, so that if you read the newsletter, which if you're watching this, you probably read the newsletter. Um, take a look at that. Take a look at that information and share it amongst your friends. We and encourage you, especially if you're sending this newsletter, uh, if you've got friends in the district, that you'll send this newsletter or the newsletter yes. or this this, uh, this video on to them so they know what's going on uh, in their district as well. Speaking of things going on in the district, uh, we're coming to the end of yes. the session uh we need to be done by midnight on the 25th i believe yes um, so, otherwise known as signy die signy die signy die um because so it's you got, we, we got stuff out. it's 160 days of record that we have to maintain right. for our session no more yeah. than no, no more, more than you can you can adjourn early you nearly never yeah. do um but you, you can't be any longer than 160 days so we're coming up on that and that also means you've got stuff planned for the summer more yes. not just vacations which i don't think you actually even no. have any vacation scheduled actually. um no i i don't have a vacation scheduled i'm gonna stay home and water my garden and take care of my uh, district yes so what have you got going this summer well, <laughs> I'm hoping, well, besides the parade schedule, which of I course. Really enjoy, we did the St. Helens uh, parade on Saturday and it was so enjoyable. There were so many little kids and we get, we tossed out um, a lot of candy. And, uh, but it was also a really good time to meet with people. Um, we got to tour the Life Empowered um, facility in, and, um, in St. Helens, and hopefully there can be some money to be able to upgrade for them. And we got to visit with the county commissioners on on uh, their courthouse issues and 
um, some other things that are coming up that are need to be addressed. And then we also, in addition to the parade, got to go to Rainier and see their, uh, they have one room in the courthouse that is their museum currently. And they are hoping to break ground for uh, a real museum. They have the land secured, they have the plans, they have, you just need a little more money to be able to do it. And they're um, working towards applying for grants to be able to do that. So we got to visit that museum and talk to the leaders that, of that group that are you know, going to make sure that it happens. And so it's, it's things like that that are gonna take up um, the time until September when we have ledge days again. But um, I think there's a parade and an opportunity like that every single weekend for the rest of the summer. Pretty darn close. Um, talking with Katie, and, can keep the staff in it. She says it's pretty packed. And the other thing is, um, I have plans to also meet with um, city leaders and county leaders, and to also uh, be able to uh, have some uh, town hall meetings, um, either with my partner um, legislators or without. And uh, I want to uh, be able to report to them what actually you know went on, what that's going to be impacting our district especially. And I, I want it to be a listening session. Um, I, I know that there are people that are also going to come in and, and yell because they feel that there wasn't enough done but you know, that's not going to be honored. Um, I think it's more important that we hear from people in a civilized manner as to how they're going to be impacted by this and what they wanna see going forward and questions that they have that are related to everything that was done in the session. Right. So, so if, you know, if all of the getting together and the meeting with people uh, I think is really important so that, you know, we can continually stay in touch with our constituents and, and be able to educate them about how these things are going to be impacting their lives, right. whether I voted for them or not. Right. So I think, uh, no, I know that, um, Katie's still trying to put together uh, yes. the dates and times trying to coordinate it with, with other legislators so that especially the folks in the house so people can see their representative and their senator on one place right. yeah i think it um really trying to make it convenient for for folks um and those, so those dates and times haven't been hammered out yet but we're hoping to be within the next month or so i think um the idea, as Senator Weber said, is she'll report on what happened and then she just wants to hear it. What do you want to happen next? And in no way, shape or form, I think she can commit that it will happen. But I think it's important when she goes back in in January for the short session or February, February for the short session. February, yeah, um, 35 days that that she can bring what she heard to the floor. Um, certainly we appreciate the the phone calls and emails and things like that during this section but um if you want to have an idea if you have an idea for for legislation that you think could be useful it's good to have that now it's good yes. to have that now so that it can be developed it can be written and it can be introduced um right. least, i know you got a number of ideas legislative ideas that were actually pretty good but they came in too late you couldn't introduce them right uh, so you put them in the file for the next year. So if you've got something you want to, you think would be, oh, this would be a good idea uh, legislatively, maybe bring that up to Senator Weber in the next few months so we can be developed and actually come up. Uh, that's helpful. And I, I think it's really important because a lot of the legislation that you introduced, Senator, actually comes from your constituents, ideas that you, a constituent had. Yes. And uh, they said, wait, that'd be a, I think this would be a good bill. And sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, it not. doesn't come up, uh, but sometimes it is. So we'd love to hear from folks' uh, ideas. I think that's going to be a, a good part, good part of what that those town halls are going to be for. Right. And, you know, uh, 
we ha- did have uh, one bill that would have been very important to our state um, concerning election days and dates right. that um, we just couldn't get bipartisan support for. Right. And so we're going to, you know, a lot of these bills, and, and I bring this up because a lot of the bills that come forward sometimes take years to mm-hmm. pass. Unfortunately, there's yeah. another one that they want me to bring forward that I brought forward in the short session last time and concerning the CCOs and um, the health organizations and they wanted to come forward again. OK, well, this will be another uh, try at that and we'll see if there can be more support for that uh, going forward. We got a lot of your bills that unfortunately didn't make it. Uh, there were good bills. Yes. Um, that I think uh, talking with Katie that we're just going to reintroduce next year and with the hope that um, yes. they'll have a shot. And if not, you still got another th- another two years after that of your term that we can be pushing. Right. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But um, looking forward everybody to um see being seeing everybody out in the district and uh just having a just having kind of a a busy but fun summer yes and i've already got my strawberry jam made excellent so i can move forward oh spectacular yeah senator anything else before we wrap it up for the day no but i well really there is one more thing and I really want to thank the people who have respectfully um, written um, emails to me uh, with concerns about this. Um, I think that civility is very important. And you know what? I'm much more willing to listen to someone who is not calling me names to to do what they want me to do. And unfortunately, it's... Um, sometimes it's people you know that, you know, call you um, extremely, uh, names that are in extremely poor taste. Right. And because they can type it out on an email, they think it's all right to send it. Yeah. And so I just want you to know that, you know, your respectful uh, messages are probably given far more credibility um, than the ones who call me names. I would say that's on both sides. You had some, during this process of quorum denial, you had 80% of the messages you got were positive and supportive. But you did have some folks who, um, you didn't, they, they were not supportive. And there you had some of those were respectfully written, laying out their concerns. And I think yes. those were very well received and gave you some thought. The form letters weren't helpful. I'm sorry, folks. No. You send a form letter because your union says it just isn't helpful. It just when when you get 50 but, in a row that say exactly the same thing, and it comes from and and then you forget to take off who gave it to you to send. I will say when they did say when they say exactly the same thing, Katie just sets up a an out, a Microsoft Outlook rule that they all go into a folder. Yes. So. Um, and then when you say, quite frankly, when you when you call names and get rude, it just makes us want to do it more. I mean, yeah. honestly, I think, don't, yeah. don't do that. It not only does it reflect very poorly on you. Um, if you can't cogently describe your objection without using profanity, um, you're pretty hard to take seriously. Yes. So there's that, and two, it just it it actually has the opposite effect of what it certainly does <laughs> um so for those folks and there were there were a number of them and, and they were in the hundreds yes. uh, who wrote and said this is i don't like this and here are my concerns and that was that was just one that was just great i, I it, even though you disagreed with them it was great to hear the other side's point of view laid out and yes. it was it was great um and now but now it's done it's done. Yes. And it is time for us to move on and get some of these good bills and the budgets passed. Yes. And and so. I also want to thank you for all of your dad jokes. Oh, yes. My Father's you Day You had some really great um, Father's Day contributions to dad jokes. Thank yes. you. 
Yes, it is my, those are folks who know me personally. Oh, and you are. <laughs> no, personally, I, I turned my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, every year on Father's Day to like a dad joke every 15 minutes. So, yes. and it's always my hope that it brings a smile on everybody's face, <laughs> uh, especially those for whom Father's Day might be a tough day. I uh, hope everybody got a smile out of, out of that. And um, uh, I think just going forward, just a heads up that uh, as we're ending this, uh, we will probably be doing one of these once a month. Uh, and probably a newsletter once a month as well. Once a month will be our newsletter. Um, unless unless there's something special coming up, and then yeah. we'll we'll try to do something you know, something there. But probably look forward to hearing from us about once a month going forward until we hit the next session in, in February. Uh, then we'll go back to weekly during session. Yes, and we'll keep you updated, especially in September and um, December when we have ledge days as to what is happening and right. uh, we'll also be in contact with you uh for you know bill concepts yep absolutely well senator thank you very much again happy juneteenth to you yeah, and uh, to you too. Thank, thank you very much everyone and we'll see you next time gotcha thank you